<clears throat> so we've got a 505 gram mass oscillating with an amplitude. Okay, so mass, uh, amplitude, okay, good. So you have that in your mind. It's stretched out 13 centimeters from equilibrium. We also know the spring constant, and we want to figure out the period. Okay, so the period, we know that's 2 pi, the square root of m divided by k. Just be careful, this is in uh, centimeters. This is in new, uh, newtons per meter. So you've got to change that into meters, divide by 100. And then you have everything, though. You've got, uh, you're trying to figure out the period. You know it's simple harmonic motion. You have the formula for the period. So your life is a lot easier, right? You don't have to try to analyze this complex motion. We've already done it today. Um, now, to calculate the period, you do not need... Ah. So let me back up. I said be careful with, uh, with the amplitude. You don't need the amplitude to calculate the period. You need the mass. So make sure you put this into kilograms. So divide it by 1,000. Okay, so be careful with the 13 later on, though. So again, period square root of m over k. This is the m. This is the k. All right, good. Uh, part B, determine the maximum speed. Okay, so there's a couple ways of getting the maximum speed. We have the formula for maximum speed that we use. 2 pi times the frequency times the amplitude. You can get the maximum speed that way. Um, another way of getting it, though, is knowing that the, uh, all the spring potential energy becomes kinetic energy, where the, where the speed is a maximum. So let me show you how you can do part B without using that formula that we came up with, doing it another way. So when uh, you look at it this way, 1 half Ka squared is equal to 1 half mv max squared. So that's perfectly good. This is the total energy of the system. This is the total energy of the system. We're just looking at two different spots. And we're trying to figure out the maximum speed. So you can use this to get uh, this formula to get the maximum speed. The 1 halves go away. So Ka squared divided by m. So uh, again, the halves cancel out. Divide both sides by m. Take the square root. You can get the maximum speed. So you can get it that way, and then you can compare it to 2 pi f times the amplitude. This is the way we've done it previously, but you could also do it this way. OK, because you know the spring constant, um, the amplitude's given the mass is given. That's just another way of getting the maximum speed. Okay. Good. Any questions on part B? Multiple ways of doing part B. Now let's go back to part C. Ah, the total energy. Okay. So uh, the total energy is probably, you can pick either of these ways these ways. 1 half Ka squared, that'll give you the total energy. 1 half mv max squared, that's also the total energy. Ah, you can't see it then. Now you can see it. Okay, so the total energy here, so mechanical energy, the total mechanical energy, you could write it as 1 half Ka squared, and you can do this because you know K and A, or if you want you could do 1 half mv max squared. Do it both ways and compare it, and then you can check your answer. You should get the same answer, regardless of the way that you do it. OK. So those are really all the problems from chapter 14. The, the part that we didn't cover was a pendulum. So a pendulum is also simple harmonic motion. But um, we don't have time this semester to, to get into that. OK. Do you have any homework 8 questions? I'll get it ready while you're looking for it. OK. All right. 
So this is homework eight, the ninth problem from homework eight. And uh, it's from chapter seven, so 7.33. An athlete at the gym holds a three kilogram steel ball in his hand. His arm's 70 centimeters long, and the arm itself has a mass of four kilograms. For the steps and strategies, you can take a look at the, this video from the author of the book. What is the magnitude of the torque about his shoulder if he holds his arm straight out to his side parallel to the floor? Did you get the answer for, for the first part? Oh, okay, well, let's take a look at it. You might have different numbers than me, but, but let's set it up here. So the arm doesn't really look like this, but we're gonna assume it's a uniform shape. And then the ball is over here. So the mass of the ball times G, mass of ball times G. And then the mass of the ball, I think, was three kilograms. Okay, so really this is the force of gravity on the ball, but your arm is holding it up, so they're actually equal to it. And then if your arm is a uniform shape, the mass of the arm itself times G. Okay. So we want to know what's the magnitude of the torque from, uh, from these two forces. And we know the arm is 70 centimeters long. Okay, good. So uh, the arm itself is a distance of 35 centimeters to the center of mass of the arm. And then it's 70 centimeters all the way here. So the net torque from each of these, it's the force, ma times g, and then the distance to the pivot point. So make sure you put it as 0.35 meters. And then plus the mass of the ball times g, that's the force part. And then uh, torque is force perpendicular distance. This would be 0.7 meters. So we'll have to add these together. I've got my trusty TI-36X Pro with me today. Do you have the same numbers? No, okay. And we just want the magnitude of the torque. The way I have it drawn here, technically the torque would be negative because it's going uh, clockwise, but we don't really know which way it is. That's why they're asking for the magnitude. So the mass of the arm itself was four kilograms. So uh, first term here, I've got four times 9.8 times 0.35 plus three times 9.8 times 0.7. Uh, 34.3 Newton meters. What are your numbers for yours? They were both four? Uh, okay, same distance? Okay, so uh, both the years were four. Four times 9.8. So with your numbers, I get 41.16. Do you happen to have yours with you or you have to, don't have it with you? What's that, sorry? Ah. Ah, oh, uh, okay. Ah, okay. That's a common uh, uh, overlooked part. When you're looking for the torques, it's got to be the force. So you've got to make sure that you put G in there to make it a force instead of just the mass. Okay, I bet that's what it was. Okay, and then... Uh, so it's a little bit different when you hold your arm at 60 degrees. Not too much, though. We just have to do a little bit of trig here. So this was the total distance. This was R perpendicular and R perpendicular. The only thing that changes for the second part is this is 60 degrees below the horizontal. So it's 
So we still have this force here and this force here. What we have to do is find out this perpendicular distance. This is the perpendicular distance for the ball. You can draw this wherever you want to. This is the perpendicular distance for the arm. Okay, so let me just do one of them so you can see the, the process here. This is 60 degrees. This whole thing is still um, 0.7 meters. So it looks like the cosine of 60 will be the adjacent side. And again, this is 90 degrees. Our perpendicular for the ball, uh, cosine, and then divided by 0.7. So cosine of 60 times 0.7 meters is the perpendicular distance for this one. So you, you don't have the complete 0.7 lever arm. It's smaller for this case. So cosine of 60, which is the square root of 3 over 2, around 0.866 times 0.7. Actually, the cosine of 60 is a half. That's right. OK. Uh, so this turns out to be uh, 0.35 um, meters. Good. So th these distances are basically cut in half, right? Cosine of 60 is a half. So this one here is going to be, instead of 0.35, it looks like it's going to be 0.175. You know, if you go through the, the trig of that again, this is uh, 0.35. Um, this one is 60. So it's the cosine of 60 again times uh, 0.35 will give you 0.175, half. Okay, good. So, um, so take a look at it, see if that, if that should work out for you, I think. So you, uh, cosine of 60 times 0.7, yeah. So uh, make sure that you're in uh, degree mode there. Okay, good, good. All right. Excellent. Are you able to enter it or you have to do it later? What's that? Sorry. Point six zero. Oh, yours is thirty. Ah. Uh. Oh, so you've got different. You've got different. You'll just have to use thirty instead of sixty. Then. So if you have 30 degrees here, let's do that. So I would have 0.7 times cosine of 30. So 0.606? Okay, good. So you just have different, different angles, so you have a different number. You know, you got to take that number and then go back to the first step, put the different yeah, this is just giving you the perpendicular distances. Then you have to go back and change them to, you know, the new distances. Right, this is, the, this is for the ball. This one's for the arm. So take your new um, perpendicular R distance for the ball, put it in here, same thing there. Did the first part work out? Yes. Oh, okay, good. So just, just getting that little part corrected then. Okay.